sure. Uh, they're oh, probably going to be like, because I mean, sometimes it, it gets weird with 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 property. That, that son man has been in a. Um, somebody got a lot of feedback. Um, has been in a, um, has been in a lot of shit before he survived, man. Like he um. He um. Please be advised, the following video contains graphic violence. Attorneys for Oklahoma football player Joe Mixon have released surveillance video showing the running back punching a female student in the face. Earlier this month, the Oklahoma Supreme Court ruled that the video must be released to the public. Mixon's attorney, Blake Johnson... He attacked him? He had no choice. Look at look at Yeah, that. she fucking attacked him. What the fuck? <laughs> She she pushed him, man, and you know, deserved to get knocked into the middle of next week. What do you think about that, baby? You think of uh, equal force? You think you think that was the right amount of force for what she did? She pushed him and slapped him, but he could have done the um the what the Joe whatever guy the the UFC guy UFC fighter guy and just slapped her back with the the reduced force, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have knocked her in the middle of next week. I know that much. Especially if I'm representing the university as a he was a, he was a star he was a star on the football team. If I'm a star on the football team, I'm not hitting that girl like that. Just for pushing me on my chest. Yeah. You know, I don't know. That seemed like a lot. <laughs> and Listen, if that would have been a white player and a sister, if that had been a white player and a sister had pushed the white player, he's done. The white yeah, player, he would have been done. Yeah, it would have been a wrap. He would have been kicked out. Yeah, this guy still got drafted very high. This didn't affect this guy's career at all. This didn't. This was. A, this didn't affect this guy's career at all. Earlier this month. The Oklahoma Supreme Court ruled that the video must be released to the public. Mixon's attorney, Blake Johnson, issued a statement following its release, writing in part, quote, Mr. Mixon asked us to once again say he is sorry for the way he reacted that night. He has apologized publicly to Miss Molitor, her friends, his family, teammates, and the university. He hopes that his voluntary release of these recordings will help put this matter to rest. The incident happened in July 2014 at a Think campus. This, the son, man, he thought that putting this tape out would help him. There's no way a glider is in a situation with a sister and says, man, look at this tape, man. See, I was justified. <laughs> well, under the law, he is under... Uh, standards of behavior not so much yeah social norms social norms you don't um knock a woman into the middle of next week because she a drunk woman who pushed you on the chest and like slapped you at like fucking like the probably that slap probably felt like if he had grabbed her arm even twisted it put her behind her back and pushed her up against the wall i'd have been okay with that why is this coming back up now? No, this is this is the same guy who the last story was about. Oh, 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 that's why. Yeah, I'm His just house. Oh, I, I'm, yeah, I'm just I'm just telling you that like it's this that son man who was whose house this happened at, like he not worried about like remember you're supposed to be hanging from a tree for doing this, you know what I'm saying? Like you you're supposed to like like you're supposed to never, as a son, man, or my white girl, look, he, 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 she a white girl. I'm in trouble now. I, I'm not going to get a fair trial. Man, this guy, nothing happened. Nothing happened. He put the tape out. Like, look. <laughs> she started it. He put the tape out. That's that's what kind of altered reality we live in. Fabian, you there? I think Fabian's... um not connecting properly but yeah that's what type of world we live in he was like yo 
he was getting so much backlash. It was a rumor going around that he had punched some girl. He was like, nah, man, let me show you this take, man. She pushed me, man. <laughs> so, yeah, I fucking knocked her into the middle of next week. And this is a white girl in the South. But yeah, man, it's just funny, man. It's just glad it's been terrible at well, Ashley, Joe Horrible at racism, man. You guys suck, suck, suck at racism, man. Um, let I'm me getting see one. more of the uh, more into the camp of women. If you attack a man in public, you deserve to be hit. But that was a little much. That full sun man <laughs> punch. Yeah, he hit her with a right cross on her chin. He hit her so hard that she was out instantly. Like, she was asleep before she blinked. She was asleep before he followed through. Like, as soon as he touched her chin, she was asleep. You knew this morning an arrest in a deadly shooting in Witten Terrace. Cincinnati police say 22-year-old Mike Sean Stanley shot and killed 21-year-old Amaya Stanley. The shooting happened on Craft Street around 11 Friday night. The victim was pronounced dead at the scene. Last night, Cincinnati police, with the help of Coleraine Township and Hamilton County SWAT, arrested Mike Sean Stanley after an apparent standoff. It happened on Longwood Court off of John Rose Avenue in Coleraine Township. Police surrounded an apartment complex around 6.30 p.m. and remained on scene for about three hours. Our crews at the scene could see SWAT trucks and police officers inside the stairwell wearing tactical gear. Police say the suspect was arrested on an open murder warrant. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to do one more from Cincinnati because this it, Cincinnati is a rough... Uh, <laughs> Cincinnati is a rough one, man. We might not... I might not be able to get out of this place tonight, man. Um, uh, let's. <laughs> I don't know what you want to choose. Let's, <laughs> Jesus Christ, we got to come back to Cincinnati tomorrow, man. <laughs> Finish Cincinnati tomorrow. We did learn just a short time ago an arrest has been made. Middletown police arrested 33-year-old Darnell Dollar and charged him with murder. Investigators say he beat the 61-year-old. <laughs> Even though she battled with pill addiction, um, that's not the only thing, person she was. Like, she was a funny person. She, you know, wanted to, she would give you the shirt off of her back, yeah. even if she didn't have one. Tabitha Reddix wants people to know who her mother was. 61-year-old Connie Reddix may have battled addiction, but she did not deserve to die. On Monday, Middletown police received a 911 call. Dude, there's somebody beating up an old lady behind Cincinnati State right now. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we're just going around kicking the shit out of glider with me left and right. <laughs> and like, this is supposed to be like some racist country where like, if you lay a finger on a glider and some people talk like that, I promise you they talk like that. On Twitter, you seen the comments in the Twitter, on the Instagram post? And she's a white woman. He gonna do life in jail. Oh shit! He shouldn't have messed with a white woman. They really gonna they gonna suspend him now. Oh. And if the caller had pulled out his CCW gun and shot the guy beating the old woman to death, he would be <laughs> vilified. Yeah, I mean, you beat the sixty-one year old woman like it's just crazy, man. On Monday, Middletown police received a 911 call. Dude, there's somebody beating up an old lady behind Cincinnati State right now. Y'all gotta get there fast, dude. She's an old lady and she looks like she has health issues. Connie's family says a man she met at a homeless shelter and someone she called a friend is the one who beat her. They say he then dragged her to this used car lot and locked her in an SUV on the back of the property. Kelly Booker is Connie's niece. Her nose is broke, her cheekbones are broke. You you don't even know who he, she is. The, I, her, you know, her jaw's broken. Um, you know, she's that, got marks all the way around her neck, bruises from him strangling her and dragging her five blocks. Yesterday, someone. 
So he's dragging a, a white, a black guy's dragging a white woman five blocks in a major city. And it's just, well, this is Middletown, a suburb, I guess. And yeah, you know, just, I, he, he's been seen beating her. And he drags the elderly woman five blocks. I mean, where is the racist, a racist society? You wouldn't even think you could do that. You did what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you wouldn't even think you could do that. But you would... tried that in South Africa 40 years ago. <laughs> there would have been, they would have had the, uh, the rope around his neck or whatever. Yeah, but you shouldn't you shouldn't think that you could do that. <laughs> Gliders already don't think they can do that. And if someone is in a glider society that displays that they think they could do that, obviously they need to get dealt with. Yeah. I wonder if he dragged her by her hair or her feet. I hope he dragged her by her hair. Gave her some dignity and not dragged her by her feet. Five blocks. Jesus, that's a long way to drag somebody. After you beat them to death with other people watching. Sounds like he dragged them by their dragged her by her neck, like had her arm around her neck or was dragging her. And these are her daughters. Look how pissed off they are. Her cheekbones are broke. You you don't even know who he, she is. Like her you know, her jaw's broken. Um, you know, she's that, got marks all the way around her neck, bruises from him strangling her and dragging her five blocks. Yesterday, someone saw a woman in the car and notified police. When police arrived, Reddix was dead. Today, Middletown officers arrested 33-year-old Darnell Dollar and charged him with murder. No, I don't have a mom the rest of my life because of him. You know, I don't care if I'm 36 or if I was 20. Like, you brutally murdered my mom, and I hope that justice is served for him. Me too. He is, he's definitely a monster. It took her everything in her soul to call that guy a monster. She feels terrible about calling him a monster, right? She's she, she's gonna she she's gonna go home and repent to the wolf gods. I shouldn't have called him a monster. Maybe I should have just called him. Because the first one nailed it. She she's she's in good standing right here. Like you brutally murdered my mom and I hope that justice is served for him. Me too. He is he's definitely a monster. And the family wants everyone to know, anyone who may have a family member battling addiction or homelessness, how important it is to stay in touch with them, know who they are hanging out with, maybe at the homeless shelters. This family says they did. They knew about Dollar. And when everything unfolded, they immediately communicated with police. Uh, they, they relayed information they had. They knew where their mom and aunt were staying. And they feel that helped police make a quick arrest. Reporting live tonight in mm -hmm. Oh God, you glad this man. I listen, man. <laughs> Jeez. I'm out, man. <laughs> I'm out. Peace out. Night out.